What is going on everyone and welcome to r slash entitled parents now before we get into today's video Hopefully you guys can see the uh, the quality of this channel has gone up a little bit You know, I've got a new camera a new lens. We're looking all fancy got a blurred background I hope you like it My aim is to not just be the most entertaining reddit channel, but also the reddit channel with the highest quality Let me know if i'm getting there. I've got a long way to go. That's for sure Anyway, let's get straight into today's first entitled parent story Entitled mum thinks my color blindness is contagious tries to get me banned from school fair bit of backstory I am mildly colorblind protonopia. I think and i've had this my whole life I mostly struggle with telling the difference between pink and yellow, but there are more colors out there I can't see this all started when the primary school my younger brother was at 11 at the time and not colorblind was putting on a party slash fair I don't remember what for but I think it had something to do with fair trade Now my mother made me cut out some paper chains along with other people in the gym to prepare for the fair But more and more people left until it got to the point where it was just me and another kid and an old gentleman at the back Remember this part now this kid was professional at making paper chains them how I struggled to keep up I was sitting closer to the piles of paper than he was when the kid ran out of paper He therefore kindly asked me to pass some of the yellow paper I pulled some pink paper out of the pile thinking of course that it was yellow and he looked at me confused So I responded with wait is this pink or yellow and he responded pink and led me to the yellow paper I apologized and told him I was colorblind and he started to ask questions They were questions for curiosity such as do you see red or what color is that? Then enters an entitled mum The entitled mum in this case was the kid's mother and had entered the gym looking for the kid's father and overheard us talking about my colorblindness. The entitled mum first said, sweetie, please keep your distance. I don't want you to become colorblind as well. I was utterly confused at this point and replied with, excuse me, you can't catch colorblindness from another person? The entitled mum then proceeded to give me BS looks and then walked out of the gym with her son in tow. I'd say about five minutes later, she returns with the head of the department and said, yup, he's the one. The head then approached me and said, are you the one causing disturbance down here? Um, no, what do you mean? This woman thinks my color blindness is contagious and that I'm going to give it to her son. The head, of course, did not believe me being a 14 year old at the time who slacked off a lot. My mother overheard the conversation and walked into it and started to defend me until the entitled mum yelled Colorblindness is contagious and you're gonna give it to everyone here if you don't leave Me and my mum looked at her utterly shocked and we weren't exactly sure which side the head was on at this point Until she said all right, mrs. EM and you OP I'm going to ask you both to leave as you're both making a disturbance here But then the old gentleman at the back of the gym stood up and said there is no disturbance miss Mrs. EM is the only one harassing anybody here before sitting back down again Having heard his side the head banned the entitled mum from the school fair. Don't worry about the kid though He got to go with his dad. I saw the entitled mum drive out of the school and I haven't seen her since Also, as it turns out, the old gentleman was actually the school's former headmaster. Guys, seriously, have you ever in your life heard anyone ever say that colorblindness is (laughs) is contagious before? I've never heard that. I don't think anyone I've ever met in my entire life has been stupid enough to even consider that to be contagious. But this is our slash entitled parents. I guess people are really that dumb. I've just been unfortunate enough, I guess, to not meet one of them yet. It would be funny to meet someone who thought that colorblindness was contagious, surely. Anyway, lucky for you, OP, that, uh, yeah, that old headmaster was in the school because, as you say, 14-year-olds or just young people in general don't get trusted as much as adults. Usually that's fair because, you know, kids are kids and adults are adults. But this is entitled parents. Entitled people should not be trusted whatsoever. Now moving on to our second story. Get a COVID test or don't see your grandkids. So my wife and I I am a 34 year old male and she is 33 like everyone else are dealing with the intense stress of this pandemic We had our son in march on the eve of the lockdown and we're blessed to be able to have a great birth and get out Hours before patient zero in our area entered our hospital and kicked off the lockdowns 
I work retail and was able to take a month of paid paternity. We live in New York State. But when I returned to work, we decided to live apart for two months. We are blessed to have a good support network in our area with my mother-in-law and father-in-law in in the early mid 60s, taking care of our three-year-old daughter and now our son. My wife stayed with the kids at their house and moved back after things became more clear with the masks and social distancing and everything settling down more in our area. She works in an office and had four month maternity leave with full time working from home afterwards. My parents in their late 60s still live where I grew up just north of New York City and I now live in WNY I guess that's West New York about 350 miles away There is a reason why I actively put distance between myself and my parents They are very loving and have helped me through numerous rough patches in my college years But have always been a bit self-serving when it comes to their love and affection My wife and my parents have never really gotten along well They have been the sole point of contention between my wife and I throughout our relationship I still care for them, but they just won't change They are no fun to be around and generally bring a negative attitude even about the most positive things My mum wants what she wants and my dad just tails along after 40 plus years married He just rolls with it. I could write pages and pages about our relationship But we don't have time for that The most important need to know fact is that my mum has subtly and not subtly Always been jealous of the amount of time my in-laws get with the grandkids versus the amount that she gets That should tell you all you need to know about her mindset here They visited over the summer when my son was about four months old It was a fine visit but afterwards my wife got very sick with pneumonia and was almost hospitalized She took several negative covid tests, but it lasted almost a month She is still dealing with some after effects and her doctor is obviously concerned Especially since she's still breastfeeding her doctor is really concerned about the negative impacts of my wife getting sick again And still thinks it could have been covid Our kids also had slight respiratory effects as well, but with negative tests. I too had a negative test, no symptoms, although I typically don't get sick as much. Obviously, my parents want to come visit again. I know they generally do a good job wearing their masks and they really don't go out much. My wife and I do a good job with reducing exposure, wearing masks all the time in public, but we do have a small social circle of kids that our daughter plays with and we have gone out to breakfast twice in the last six weeks. Also twice in the last eight months by the way we are not accusing my parents of getting anyone sick but with the global pandemic picking back up again we asked them to take a covid test and send it to us or wear masks the whole time we also offered to take tests and send out results as well of course i don't want to ask anyone to do these things but here we are in the middle of a mother freaking global pandemic now my brother had reached out a few weeks ago and i told him the same thing to which he opted to maybe wait till next year then which is his choice my mum and i talked about this after i told my brother because of course we did cut to today when we had our weekly video chat where we talked about planning a weekend in december for them to visit i had specifically talked with my mum about my wife's health concerns and waiting for test results etc etc earlier this week We had talked about getting tested at various points over the last few weeks today though She flat out refuses to get a test My wife and I with all the kids and the dog around us kind of dumbfounded But we were also expecting some resistance somewhere in our plan We fire back on the offensive slash defensive. We were willing to forego mask wearing with the tests We're concerned for everyone's health as they're not exactly the pinnacles of human health either But my mum just flat out refuses after some back and forth voices were raised and lines were drawn in the sand I couldn't take it anymore and just straight up yelled into the video chat Get a COVID test or don't see your grandkids. My mum hung up on me. Things cooled down and she called 20 minutes later to finish up, but we still have to sort things out and she is still not wanting to take the test. So am I the butthole? Wait, am I the butthole? Which, which subreddit are we on right here? Uh, yeah, a little change in subreddit perhaps at the end there. <laughs> a bit of a weird one. But are you the butthole? Absolutely not. I don't really know why I'm answering this question given we're on our slash entitled parents, but no, absolutely not. I mean, it really isn't that hard getting a COVID test. I've had two, both negative, by the way. I keep winning. Um, 
but yeah, they're not that bad. You just have to have like a swab at the back of your throat and up your, up your schnoz. It's really not that bad in my opinion. And yeah, of course, you are going to be potentially saving, saving people's lives if you go and get a negative test because your, your mum right there, by her not getting a test and then if she was to come and see your wife and obviously your children and you, you could all be put in, you know, life-threatening danger if she is positive. You don't know if she's positive or negative, obviously, without her having a test and having a test is easy. Just go and get one. If you want to see your grandkids, go and get a test. It's really not that hard. Now, moving on to our third story. A Karen tries to bully me into giving her spawn candy. I accidentally, though, shatter her marriage. Okay, so I'm a frequent cruiser of this subreddit, but I never thought I'd actually have my own story to tell on it. I'm still not completely convinced if it wasn't a fever dream. If not for a neighbor dropping by to ask me what the heck happened last night, I probably would have dismissed it as such. But enough preface, let's get into it. So I was hoping thanks to COVID, this wouldn't be a problem, but the kids in my neighborhood keep coming to my door on Halloween for candy. Every year I tell them that no, I'm not giving it out and just go somewhere else. I've gone so far as to put out signs telling them to shove off and leave me alone every October, but the little idiots just seem to take it as a challenge. They'll repeatedly ring the doorbell until I come out or get bored. Once they went five whole minutes before they went away, or they keep coming back to my place after I tell them no, hoping I'd have changed my mind, I never do. This year, one particularly persistent little brat from the next cul-de-sac over, who made it her mission to wear me down for candy every year, rings the doorbell, and I tell her nicely, or as nicely as you can tell someone who repeatedly ignores the big red sign saying that my house is not for trick-or-treating, that I don't have any candy. She looks at me with what she probably thought were adorable puppy dog eyes, and asks me if I would just mind checking. I tell her that there is absolutely no candy in my house, nor will there ever be. I mean, that was a lie, but she didn't need to know that. Then the little monster gets it into her head that I'm lying and keeps asking me if I'm sure. I tell her that I'm diabetic. I'm not, but she apparently doesn't know what that means. One Google search on my phone later and she accuses me of lying about having it. I am, but that's not the point. I suppose I could have just given her a Hershey bar, but I really didn't want her spreading the triumphant news to all the other little monsters of how she finally got the mean lady to succumb to her will at the risk of any of them following in her example. So I just tell her that I don't have to give candy to anybody who's going to be so rude as to deny my very serious medical condition and I close the door. About an hour later, I'm hate watching the Francis Ford Coppola Dracula movie. It's a train wreck, but I can't help watching it when i get another ring on the doorbell i come down to find the little abomination peeking out from behind the legs of a very angry looking entitled mum the following exchange goes down i say how can i help you mom my daughter says you repeatedly refuse to give her candy i'm sorry i don't have any this callous attitude towards the festivities is unacceptable it's halloween you should have prepared for it i reply i didn't think any kids would be trick-or-treating this year thanks to a certain virus but the entitled mum says well after everything they've been through we as a community owe it to them to make up for all the fun they've missed out on this year look i get where you're coming from but it's 10 o'clock i'm not gonna get up and go pick up a bag of tootsie rolls at this ungodly hour just so that your kid can have the full halloween experience it's here that mummy dearest takes it upon herself to give me a lecture on the importance of participating in the community i told her that maybe if she wasn't such an entitled karen her husband would be more eager to participate in the bedroom with her instead of me (laughs) This is where I may have been kind of a butthole. Yeah, just a little bit. What I said was nothing more than a heat of the moment remark, but the woman went absolutely ballistic upon hearing it. She freaked out and started screaming about whether or not her husband was sleeping with me. Apparently, the guy actually did go on some kind of a business trip recently, and my little quip set off all the red flags in her head. She starts demanding to know if her hubby was in my house, trying to crane her neck around me to see inside, and shrieking him to come out at this point i'm tired i'm on the verge 
of a food coma from all the grocery store goodies I've binged on and I'm 100% done with all of this So I tell her to come back with a warrant and shut the door on her in spite of her attempts to wedge her way in I can still hear her meltdown on my way up the stairs now joined in disharmony with her daughter demanding to know what's going on I look out the window of my bedroom to see her angrily punching in a number on her phone and dialing up who I think was her husband The poor man got an earful. I didn't catch everything she said But at one point she mentioned something about how he has no business cheating when she could have taken advantage of his absence With her brother-in-law after he came on to her at their anniversary party But she spared his feelings by not doing anything about it She's being so loud that she draws the attention of other trick-or-treating families in the neighborhood Anybody unfortunate enough to ask what's going on gets treated to a first-hand spun bite of her marital problems One neighbor goes so far as to come out of his house and ask her to take this someplace where she isn't disrupting the ambience This though prompts her to turn her wrath on him and she shrieks at him to mind your own beeswax The poor man barely gets away with his life. It was like watching an episode of Maury unfolding. If Maury Povich was an elderly Asian man, incredible. At this point, I was seriously scared that she was going to try and break into my house, looking for proof of her hubby being there. I considered just coming out and admitting to her that I was yanking her chain, but the ball was already in motion, and I doubted whether my confession would save her marriage at this point. Fortunately, after she ended the call, she stormed off with her now hysterical crotch goblin in tears. I felt a little bad for turning what should have been a fun night for the kid into such a traumatic experience, but maybe now she'll know not to knock on my door next year. Wow, is all I've got to say after that one. It's crazy how like not offering a kid sweets on Halloween has then led to you pretty much breaking up (laughs) a woman and her husband. I mean, I kind of love it, but yeah, it's a crazy one. Maybe you should have just had some sweets, you know, just handed them out for one night in the entire year. Would it have been that much trouble, OP? I don't know. (laughs) But to be fair, if you had handed her, the kid, a sweet, we wouldn't have had this amazing story of you breaking up a marriage. So in many ways, I've got to say thank you for you not being nice to kids. Crazy, but thank you very much. Now moving on to our final story. Entitled mother pops football slash soccer ball. No, it's football. Can I just get that clear? It's football, not soccer ball. When it goes over her side of the fence, her kid becomes a bullying target at school. When I was 10, I would play football. Soccer for you Americans, no, football. With my cousins who visited my home during the holidays. We will call them Bruce and Robert for the sake of keeping identities safe. While playing football, me and Bruce tried the overhead tricks a few times, and one of these times led to the ball flying over the goal and into my neighbor's back garden. The woman was an older woman who looked in her late 30s, and she was very chubby, long brown curly hair, and a dress that made her fatness very apparent. Her son actually tried to take the ball when it went over, and me and my cousins were screaming angrily about him being a thief for trying to keep our ball that belonged to us. My two aunts, who we will call Sally, Robert's mum, and Ali, Bruce's mum, came out after hearing the shouts and demanded the ball be given back to us. The entitled mum smirked at us before digging her nails into the ball and bursting it. The loud bang had caused us to get angrier and me and my cousins actually jumped over the fence together to snatch back the pop ball. The entitled mum slapped me and told me, if you didn't want it popped, you wouldn't have kicked it over the fence. This is your fault. I cried when the son started laughing at us and I shoved him into his freezing cold pool before jumping back over. Ever since that day, I've been very apprehensive of interacting with neighbors. I got that ball for my 10th birthday. After the debacle with the Karen next door, the kid became the most hated person in school and this little bully got a taste of what it feels like to be bullied. My cousins actually spread the story around the school. A week or so after the bullying, the kid was pulled out of school and the mother moved home. The nice old lady who moved in was actually someone I considered a friend while I knew her. I helped her with cleaning her home and she gave me some money which I saved for a new ball. The rest of the leftover cash I put together to buy a scooter, a manual one not an engine scooter. Karen may have gotten away with destroying my football, but karma comes back around. Yeah, not sure how I feel about this one, to be honest, guys, because, you know, even if someone is a bully, it's not right for them to get bullied. You can't, you know, you can't fight fire with fire. It doesn't usually work. It just ends up making the situation worse and turning into a forest fire in that analogy of mine. 
Nope. Uh, anyway, I would say that the best way to, you know, make a bully stop bullying is to educate them rather than them being bullied themselves. Alternatively, you could also say, and this is fair enough, that a bully will only ever understand what being bullied is like if they are actually bullied themselves, and that would eventually make them stop. But I don't know, I, maybe maybe that is the way to go, but I'm not sure that, you know, fighting violence with, with more violence or, or, you know, abuse with more abuse is, the, is necessarily the best course for action in this situation. It would just be great if there were no more bullies. Wouldn't that be amazing? How do we get to that? I don't know. Any people that are clever at social situations and educating kids in how to be nice? Let me know down below in the comments what you would suggest. How to stop bullying once and for all. I'm all ears. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Entitled Parents. I really hope you have enjoyed it and you have enjoyed my new face in all its glory. And the nice camera is what I really mean. If you did enjoy this video and you want more right away, then check out the playlist full of my entire parent stories at once. There's loads of stuff you can binge in there. And also, make sure you are subscribed to my channel for daily Reddit content. I mean, I can't stress it enough, guys. Hit the button. We're on our way to 600k, which is a mad milestone. I want to get there quickly, so subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow with a brand new upload.